Hello guys, gals and non-binary pals, it's Budget with Ira. In today's video, we're going through our second week of the March-April budget and seeing how the week shook out. There's a couple of weird things that happened this week which actually worked in our favour, which is fantastic considering all of the unbudgeted last week. So if you're interested in this sort of content, keep on watching. Okay, so I start by saying that this week is considerably so much lighter than this week. It's pretty typical for me, for this to happen with me. I tend to have a very busy first week of the four week period because I get paid every four weeks. So that's 13 paychecks a year. Um, and then the latter three weeks are relatively quiet in comparison. So um, it's always going to look like that for us. So let's start by looking at our bills that we've paid off. So there's only one bill that we paid off in this period, which is the Sky, which was our reduced bill because I called up Sky and we reduced our package down. So if we go over to our breakdown, it was indeed 41.73. So you probably see here that it says that I should have paid car insurance on the 19th of 23.37. I actually called up my car insurance provider to see why hasn't that come out and they said, um, because I set it up last month, I paid a small amount and that covers me for the month. So my next payment is going to be the 19th of April. So I'm not actually paying any car insurance this month, which is absolutely fantastic. So that covers bills. Let's look at debt from the 19th to the 25th. So there was only one, which was our car, my car, which is 16949 as usual. We're waiting for the loan payment to come out on the 28th, which we already have planned. I've whited out the credit card payment because whatever I have left over at the end of this four week period, I'm going to plow into that debt. So with that bill payment and that debt payment sorted, all we need to do is look at our weekly check-in with our weekly cash. So we'll start with our spending. So we had 38.50 for the rest of the month and we are looking at the grey spending. So you can see that I use my personal cash nearly every single day. I didn't use it on Sunday because that was a day off from work and I didn't use it today because I'm on day off from work as well. You may be interested why I'm using an old iPhone as a calculator. It seems a bit excessive. I don't actually have a calculator. I can't use my phone because that's what I'm recording with. So I was gonna trade this in and buy a calculator and I was thinking I'd get sort of like 50 pounds for it or something. But when I looked, it's actually about two pounds. So I might as well just keep it and use it as a calculator. I just need to charge it every now and then. <coughs> so let's get started with spending. So from the Friday, we had one pound 22 on lunch. Then on the 20th, it was two pounds. Then Nothing on the Sunday the 21st. The 24th was lunch again, £3.83. And then on the Tuesday, £2.20. And then yesterday, £5.39. So lunch tends to be like a roll and a bit of ham and maybe a drink um, at work. But sometimes I'll buy, like if I'm in exceptionally early, I might buy a coffee or something like that. So it looks like I spent £5.39. Let me just double check that. Okay, 14 64 Let me double check that actually. 14 64 So my spending, I didn't add anything into it. And I shouldn't need to. And then I spent 14 64 So... 1464 plus 3850. So I've spent 5314 so far, and my starting budget was 80. So I should have 2686 left. I tend to keep change on me in my pocket, and I'll just spend my change throughout the week. So I'm pretty cool with that. So we've got 20 and 5. 6, 20, 40, 60, 80, 5, 6, 26, 86. So that is exactly where we need to be. So I should have about £13.43 left to spend over the last two weeks. That's pretty tight, but um, 
I'm very comfortable I can make that work. Moving over to petrol, I did have a petrol spend this week, which was £40. So I didn't add any money into it. And that leaves, so £40 taken out of £40, I should have nothing left. And I don't have anything left in my petrol. The reason why I did that is because I had enough capacity in my tank to fill it up with £40. I do think it will last me pretty much towards the end of the month. I might need to throw £10 in, but I'm relatively new to budgeting with petrol because I've only recently passed my test. So I think £90 is about where I need to be for next month. And then for groceries, we are looking at the green ones. So I spent £4.10 on the Friday. Small grocery purchases are quite normal for me. I work in a supermarket. I also spent sixteen ninety one yesterday. So that's twenty one oh one. So twenty one oh one plus fifty one oh two equals seventy two oh three. Nope, that's wrong. 2101 plus 123.98 is 144.99. If we take away the 175 that we budgeted, we should have 30 pounds and a penny left. So I keep all of my groceries in here and I have 30 pounds and a penny. So we're bang on. Again, that's about £15 a week, but that's very comfortable for us for the last two weeks. I'm really pleased to see that there is absolutely no unbudgeted as well for this week. So we started on minus 338.82 and we had none in this week. I did make a mistake with this and I didn't add an extra line in, so I'm going to leave all of that blank just in case I do have any unbudgeted, which I can't really afford to do. Also, really good news is that today, yesterday, I haven't spent anything at all. So I've actually had a no spend day today. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab a pen and write no spend. That's really satisfying. Okay, so for this week, we are rolling over. 26.86 in our spending, nothing into petrol. Next week, I may need to add 10 pounds into it, but we'll see how it goes. And for groceries, we are rolling in 30 pounds and a penny. So for week three, we're looking at two uh, days where no bills are coming out, but these are work days, so I'm likely to buy lunch. On the 28th, I have quite a lot of bills coming out. However, this um, is a Sunday, so it may move into the Monday or actually in the Saturday. I do have the money there just in case. Because week three ends on the Thursday the 1st, I'll be setting up a new calendar ready for the next budget as well. Just wanted to spend a bit of time talking about sinking funds. Sinking funds are relatively new to me and I definitely see the value in them. The last few months that I've been budgeting, it has been very, very difficult to add to these sinking funds because there's been very big spends that we've had to account for, that we've had to cash flow because we haven't had sinking funds to cover them. So at the moment, we're in a bit of a vicious circle where we don't have anything in our sinking funds because we can't add to them because car services and things like that keep on popping up. However, if we had the sinking funds in place, then we wouldn't need to worry about them. So I do need to find a way to break the back of it and start to add to these nice and slowly while cash flowing the things that I have to. For us, since December, we've had a big expenditure every single month of about £200, which is a significant amount of money for us. And next month is no exception. We do have to pay for my boyfriend's front two tyres on his car, and that's going to cost us about £206. So I'm really pleased with our progress of the water bill. 
25 pounds is the right amount to put away. We get a water bill every six months, which is about 150 pounds. 25 pounds times six is 150 pounds. So we're in a good place with that. Amazon is 80 pounds every year. So I arbitrarily decided on seven pounds, but I will up that to 10 pounds and uh, just stuff it until it's fully funded. Medical is in the right place because we spend 10 pounds every two months. But maybe not next month, but the month after, I will start to fund these. We are very blessed because we don't have a, a lot of debt compared to most people our age. And we have managed to stay away from multiple credit cards and things like that. We do have some significant amount of debt to clear before we get ourselves into a comfortable place. So we do have a plan together. And I'll share that with you now. So the plan. So we've read up about Dave Ramsey's baby steps and things like that, and how a debt snowball is really important and things like that, and what are what your priorities should be. We're a bit more emotional people, so we we have a different order that we're gonna do which will work out better for us. So the most important thing for us and our number one step before anything else is to pay off our credit card. Now this is our biggest debt that we have and to clear that would mean a lot to us because we've got this debt weighing over our head, which isn't massive and it's not anything necessarily to worry about. We just want it gone. So everything that we have, we're gonna funnel into it. After the credit card, our number two most important thing is to have a 500 pounds emergency fund. So I know, a lot, I know a lot of people have emergency funds that are much bigger than this and that works for them. But at the moment we do have nothing. So when tires come up or something like that that, we have, that was unexpected, like this month's fine, that would have been able to comfortably cover it. And it allows us to focus on what we want to do. So once we've got our £500 emergency fund, our third priority will be to pay off our store card. The balance on our store card is quite low, but once we've paid this off, we would be debt free. Our fourth priority after that is to pay off my overdraft. I have currently a thousand pound overdraft, which I have lived in for the last sort of 10 years. When I was a student, I had an overdraft of nearly 4,000 pounds and I've managed to pay it off very slowly over the last couple of years but the last thousand pounds has been very difficult for me to shift and I've kind of become accustomed to just living in that and paying a fine for it every single month and I just want to break that habit so once we've paid off all of this paying off a thousand pound overdraft is not going to be a big deal to us but it will be it will be significant to me after we've paid off that overdraft our fifth priority is to fund a 1k emergency fund now, all we'd be doing is adding to that £500 emergency fund. So it's only 500 extra pound. And then our sixth step, and the one that is the most important to us, um, is to have a 10k savings. And we want that so that we can buy a house. So in order to do this, at the moment, we have a minimum payment, which is our snowmall, of £222 that we've sorted out for next month. And we have a balance of £3,886. So if we only pay that £222, that's going to take 17 months. Which is far too long for us. So this is why we want to throw absolutely everything we have at this credit card so that we can get moving on these smaller goals because these will take significantly less time to make happen. And by the time we've paid off a credit card and paid off our store card, the snowball into this 10K savings will be so much bigger. So everything that we can do, any sort of extra money we get or any windfall will go into this to reduce that time down. I really want to get this done within, within eight months. That's the goal. But I don't know how I'm going to get there yet. So I will, 
I will film a debt confession soon so we can see all of the numbers that we have and I'm very comfortable sharing that with you. Um, but this is the plan for now. So if it doesn't make sense to you that I'm not funding a lot of sinking funds and I'm not putting anything into savings, it's because this is our emotional goal and the thing that is driving why we are giving ourselves such less money each month. So thank you so much to get into the end of this video, guys, gals and non-binary pals. I really appreciate you spending the time with me today. I would genuinely appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, liked and commented on this video because it would help me in the algorithm. I currently have four subscribers. Hey, Flop. Two of which are me and my boyfriend. So thank you to those two who have subscribed. I genuinely appreciate you. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next week.